Hello, folks. Welcome to another round of modern and Dylan from Alternate Universe. Okay. And on the left, we have the man of the legend, Ralph Spasato, playing Creativity Titan. And on the right, we have James Walden playing Esper Curses or Esper Enchantments. Not exactly sure what I wanted to call it. He's playing a lot of enchantments, but he is definitely playing some curses, and I feel like that's a, a better name for the deck. He's doing some resurgent belief shenanigans. And I have the deck list. Don't you worry, folks. It will be in the description. It's in the description while you hear me talking to you currently. Because I needed to see cards. <laughs> there were cards I needed to see. Um, yeah, James, both of these players are actually like really good deck builders. They both do a lot of interesting and kind of weird things. And you know what? I love that about them. James plays pretty often some type of control variant. Ralph actually doing the same thing. Uh, him playing Primeval Titans is something I do not expect to see from him ever. But if you know me, Primeval Titan is my favorite magic card in all of existence and will not budge. So I dig this character development from Ralph. Ralph also brought the AU staff coffee from Wawa on Monday. And. And step growth spiral? Yep. Pretty high up there right now in our our favorite customers' tier. <coughs> There's a gross spiral. Get to put a land into play. Draws another gross spiral for turn. Uh, scalding turn. Pass. Play scalding turn. Pass the turn. Now this is going to be different from your regular Titan list, right? If you're if someone says Titan two, you're probably assuming Amulet Titan. You know, Aim with Vigor, try to release in Grove. Bing bang boom. Attack in with six sixes, eight sixes, double strike in turn two if you can. Uh, not what we're doing here. We are going to be playing a lot of, putting a lot of lands into play, casting Primeval Titan, or popping this or po playing it with Indomitable Creativity. My brain broke for a second there. Um, and we're going to go get Valakits, put mountains into play, and be winning through that regard. You can also just win the, off the back of a six six trampler coming in. <coughs> Ralph told me, this is round two of our weekly three on modern tournament. He told me how in round one he was able to create a creativity on three because of a growth spiral on two. And it's pretty good. We like that a lot. I'll cast a shadow prophecy. There's a shadow prophecy coming in here. Okay. We'll get to look at the top four cards of the deck. Put two of them into his hand and the rest into the yard. a binding and something else in the hands going to drop a faithful mending a card that we haven't really seen on camera in a while i feel like we haven't had a reanimator on camera in a very long time also i feel like they might have dropped it in favor of like uh, oh, what's the demir spell called there's a demir draw spell james flashing back faithful mending here in response to the resurgent uh trigger Remand. Ralph will remand it. I mean, the Resurgent Blade will not have any enchantments to reanimate here. James, unfortunately, basically just getting time walked. Plays a land for turn, passes. Cast a growth spiral. Yep. Okay, stopping running to play. Untap draw. <coughs> Does he have a land in this play? Is there a mountain in his hand? It looks like a mountain. That hurts a Valakut. I'm at 18. I'm, I'm at 16. Which, if it is a Valakut, he should play the Valakut before he fetches. Uh, cast Primeval Titan. Okay. Primeval Titan coming out. Gonna get the ETB trigger. Gonna go sure. put two lands trigger. into play. Yep. <laughs> While this version of creativity is probably not the best version, it is my favorite for sure. And it is because of that stupid big green creature right there. Fifteen. Is that all five? 
Yes. Okay. James is going to fetch here. This will give him all five types for that ley line binding in his hand. Oh. Ralph just got double Valakit. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what that card in his hand is. The far left. It looks like a full art land. If it is a Valakit, he should have played it. That way, uh, should have played it for turn. That way, he got the ping with the first fetch land. And if it's a mountain, he should have played it as a land for turn and ping for six. <laughs> right, the Titan is just going to get eaten up. Go fetch. I wonder if Ralph plays Escape Ship. Feels like something Ralph would do. Just one copy. Maybe some bring to lights. Bring to light creativity. Gasper, it's far. Two mana goes spiral. Card, put a fetch on into play. <coughs> fetch. Put a fetch. Is that a carp or lost in a forest or whatever that's called? Why, bro? Okay. Trigger. Dwarf yep. line. Six to you. I'll get a dude. Three. Can't use or a lady dwarf. No. We don't know. I don't assume. And then, yep, we're gonna bolt James. Out of game one going around. We're gonna hyper cut to game two in like five seconds. Don't count. You're counting. Alright, well, while we talk, there it is. <laughs> Let's do some advertisement time while the players resolve their mulligans and do turn one. On Saturday, December 17th, we'll be hosting a modern RCQ event at our Alton University Blue Bell location. Now note that is Saturday, December 17th. In the past, we have advertised December 10th, but that is also Eternal Weekend, and we are not competing against Eternal Weekend uh, for pretty clear reasons. <laughs> so yes, yeah, Saturday, December 17th, we'll be hosting an RCQ event where you can earn an invite to the Anaheim Regional Championship. We're doing first and second place is going to get invited. There's also a bunch of other goodies that you get in store credit. There's pins, which some people aren't excited about, like a master. Uh, but I am. I love me some pins. I also love messing with maps, so I can't wait to get some pins. I will either be there recording or playing. I'm not sure which one I want to do yet. James living on the flop seas. Let me take a look at that hand. We have three lands, a creativity, a titan, and a mana leak. Pretty decent hand. Mana leak feels like the most Ralph card in the world. Um, yeah, so be there or be square. More details will be available on our website, alternateu.com. U is in the letter, not U as in Y or U. Be surprised how often we have to clarify that. Secondly, uh, this video has gone up on the day of it, but it is in advance still. So, this weekend, November 11th, 12th, and 13th, we are hosting a Brothers War pre-release event, or pre-release extravaganza, because it's technically three different days. We're hosting an event Friday at 7 p.m. If you want to play in any of the sealed events and you have the time, this is the one that you go to. We always have a bunch of people. It's always a blast. Uh, we usually get some people who dress up, which is pretty cool. It's just a great time. Then we're hosting three different events on Saturday. One at 11 a.m., one at 2 p.m., and one at 7 p.m. That 7 p.m. one, however, is a two-headed giant event. And then the one on Sunday is, I believe it, 2 p.m. I could be wrong about that one. I don't ever go to the Sunday one. Um, and that's just your regular sealed event. So yeah, go in, open some cool artifacts, get some fancy old border sketch Mishra's bauble that you don't want and you want to come find your best friend named Dylan and give them to. So I can put them in Delver, like the dirty Delver player that I am. But that's all for the announcements this week, folks. Unless you watch round three, then you'll hear a very similar spiel as well to this. 
Valak of the Bolton Pinnacle Tap. We're going to use Faithful Mending here. Draw two cards. Discard two cards. Gain two life. Honestly, the part of the effect that I forgot the, uh, was the life gain. I watched them resolve the Mending and give James two more life. And I was looking at it and I was like, oh, that's right, it does that. It's been a long time since I've cast that card. Midnight Hunt feels like it was forever ago. And it feels like the only two cards I ever think about from that set are Consider and Meat Hook Massacre. The only other one I might think about occasionally is Otherworld the Gaze. And it might just be because somebody bought like 10 of them from the store. I, I was 16 to 18 and then to 17. Oh, you're fetching. I'm yeah, sorry. fetching. James has drew a S for told, which I'm just going to go find the text for now. <laughs> I know what the card does, but I don't know if I can explain it properly off the top of my head. Alright, so at the beginning of your upkeep, put a time counter on as per told. Once each turn, you may pay zero rather than pay the mana cost for a spell you cast with converted mana cost X or less for X is the number of time counters on as per told. Really cool with suspend cards because they do not have a converted mana cost. Uh, you cannot typically cast them, but as per told is allowing you to do so through an alternate means, meaning he can play that resurgent belief for free from his hand and get all his artifact or er, artifacts, all his enchantments into play. We're going to as foretold here, not as foretold. We're going to Faithful Mending, draw two cards, discard two from the graveyard because of flashback. <laughs> Ralph's gameplay er, uh, game this time looking a lot more fair than game one did. James can play a Flood of Strand, this is the one for him. Are we going to fetch? Well, yep, we're going to be spreading seas. It looks like targeting, targeting Valakut. Targeting Valakut into an island. You know, Ralph has Titan and Creativity in hand. I wonder if James has interaction for the creativity. What interaction could he have? Leyline binding, maybe? He does have the domain. Go to 16. See a plane in his hand. We know there's an as we're told. Shadow prophecy. Right, do everyone come out here? Just gonna creativity that dwarf out of existence. Target. Yep. Good. That's good. <coughs> we are popping it. We are spinning it. No reveal cards on top of that until we hit an artifact or a creature. No, if you folks want to play Indomitable Creativity uh, decks, do not put artifacts into your deck unless you are really okay with <laughs> wheeling into them. Uh. Yeah. Trigger. Trigger. Yep. The artifacts too. I very tiredly put a chalice of the void in my sideboard and sided it in and then popped the dwarf and put a chalice in the play. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, shit, that's right. I just like scooped my cards up and I was like, this is, I'm just going to go for a shame walk real quick. Luckily, I was just playing my coworker, but still, you know. It's one of those things your coworker will bully you for. Eighteen. 
getting a tapped hollowed fountain. Do you have all five? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Untapped draw. Uh, I'm very pro just us jamming this as we're told right now. Two Shadow Prophecies, a Basic Planes, as we're told, and Resurgent Belief are the cards that James has in his hand. Alright, there's our As for Toll coming out. Resolves. Oh, it's three mana. Why did I think it was four? Alright, I'm going to cast Resurgent Belief. Belief here for free. Going to return all those enchantments into play, er, from the yard into play. And we're going to go look at this deck list because I don't know the names of these cards off the top of my head. As cool as they are, I do not know all the curses. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So we Leyland Binding, the Titan. Oh, did we not put a curse in the play? Am I misremembering? Or am I reading them? I might be reading them. Curses were definitely put in the play, weren't they? Hmm. Maybe it's not this second. Well, if you're wondering what the uh, enchantments that he wants to put into play typically are, so he plays one cool reality, which is a seven mana enchantment, it's cursed. At the beginning of enchanted players up here, that player is execution of Planeswalker, and that player kill, he or she loses five life. Uh, one overwhelming splendor, enchant player, creatures enchanted player, controls lose all abilities and have base power and toughness one one. Enchanted players can't activate abilities that aren't mana abilities or one two abilities. Not online yet. Not online. Not four online. cursing misfortunes. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may search your library for a curse card that doesn't have the same name as a curse attached to a enchanted player. Put it on the battlefield attached to that player to shuffle your library. Curse of death's hold. Like enchanted player. Creatures. Enchanted player. The prerequisites are met, right? I have to sneeze. Oh, God. Right, we're good. Yep. And then, uh, curse of exhaustion. Yep. Enchanted player. Enchanted player can't cast more than one spell each turn. And then it's four dress downs. Four as we're told. Those are the enchantments. Uh, probably some other stuff in the sideboard. Uh, there's a temporary lockdown, lay down the void. Spread and see these. That's cute. I like the deck list one. It's pretty nice. We like it, James. We like it. The hard part is going to be uh, the interaction with the land base for James here. Alkid is a difficult card to deal with. And you don't have a Blood Moon type effect. Spreading Seas can be good. Uh, we're able to snipe all of the Valakits. But, unfortunately, you can't play it during your turn. Three S for Tolls getting counters here. We're going to Shadow Prophecy. We're going to get five cards. We're going to get two into our hand, three into the yard. I'll lose two life at eight. We have one live out. Yeah. Okay. He could pick the planes, put that into play, and then Shadow Prophecy to try and find another resurgent belief. The issue is going to be Ralph just needs to find. This is six. Ah, he might be okay. No, no, he's not. He has a fetch line to play. Yeah, if Ralph goes to sick, or if James goes to sick, Ralph can fetch, get him out, and put James to three, and then he has either, um, either find lightning bolt or uh, a mountain. I'll put a faithful mending marsh glides and cruel reality in my or a run and sick. Okay, and you take two. Yep. You ready? Usually, Ralph has options for how he can win this game. A full tech swamp. Oh, baby. Out of the card. Another shadow prophecy. <laughs> okay. There's shadow prophecy again. That's a profane tutor. Okay. We'll be able to profane tutor for the research belief. Misfortunes in the graveyard. I'll go to six. 
Utilizing this as I will cast profane tutor. Yep. Profane tutor. Yep. That's like a zero mana, zero mana demonic tutor. Speaking of which, I'm actually, uh, speaking of tutor effects, is it diabolic tutor? Whichever one's coming in Brothers War, I'm pretty excited for. I think it'll be a cool addition to some decks. I don't think it's Diabolic Tutor. I don't remember the name. But someone you sack a creature. And then you do its effect. And then using another right. as going to cast Resurgibly for free here off of the other as for Toad. Or one of the other as for Toad. I guess he still has three of them. Here's where the curses come into play. <laughs> I was just remembering a little too quickly. Alright, so that's the cruel reality and a curse of uh, misfortune is coming down. Creature, I have to. You have to. Okay. Creature or plane I'm going to sack that Primeval Titan. <laughs> Has a wooden foothills of hand. I can bring it down to here, so I can't really go past that. So Ralph should just be able to play the foothills fetch with both of them and then kill James. Sure. With the Valakit Molten Pinnacle triggers. Fun fact Valakit, not legendary. Even though it's Valakit the Molten Pinnacle. It sounds very much like a named legendary to me. Sorry. Yeah. Got I play Valakit okay. decks. But. Sorry. Yeah. Alright, that'll be game two going to Ralph on Creativity Titan. Thank you for watching, folks, and have a great rest of your day.